Good morning, Weather Face Centre, Luton and Bedford. I'm your pastor, Fred Lamte. And for those joining us on the social media outlet and the YouTube channel, we welcome you to our online service this morning. We are a church that loves the Lord. We love His Word. And I want to say to you, God loves you. Yeah, God loves the, the sinner, but he hates him. The Bible said everyone that comes to him, he never drives away. So nothing should stop you from enjoying a time of fellowship with us this morning. And I trust you'll be blessed as we share God's word together this morning. <clears throat> we are still in a lockdown. Praise God, the word of God cannot be locked down. We cannot gather the way we are. We've always done it. But thank God, through technology, we are able to fe fellowship virtually. Okay. So we're going to go into the Word today. And before we do so, let's just share a word of prayer. Dear Lord, we thank you. And we do so for your goodness. We thank you for your love for us. We thank you for Jesus who laid down his life that abundant life will be our portion. We thank you that he has set us free. The Bible says he who the Son set free is free indeed. O open our eyes, Lord, to behold the wondrous things in thy word as we share this morning. Bless your word as it goes forth. Lord, we do thank you so much in the name uh, of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We're going to go into the word now. I said before, um, I was meditating on, obviously, what to share uh, with God's uh, people this morning. I also felt it was important that in the times for that we live, that uh, whatever we share should not just be for the sake of sharing, but the timeliness and the relevance of it is very important. So as I meditated and spent some time, I believe the Lord was leading me to uh, a text in the book of uh, Ephesians, uh, which I'll be looking uh, at it shortly. And one thing I know at the moment that for most of us, what we have plenty of at the moment is time. So if you go with me to the book of Ephesians, please get your Bibles out. And whilst we go in there, the book of Ephesians is in the New Testament. Okay. The one of uh, Paul's epistles or letters. Uh, to the church. I mean, in the New Testament, you have the the Gospels, which are of a historical uh, nature. I mean, they tell us a bit about uh, Jesus' life uh, on the earth and the things that he did. Then we have the epistles, uh, most of them written by Paul to the church and to some individual. And then we have the general epistles written by others like Peter and John. Okay, if you've got your Bible now, I believe you should. <laughs> Praise God. We're going to read from uh, chapter 5 of the book of, the Ephes book of Ephesians. It said verses 15 and 16. It says, See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are evil. I read from the New International Version as well, which says, Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise, but as wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days 
are evil. Paul writing here to the Ephesian church, he wasn't writing to people who are not believers. He's writing to the likes of people like yourself and myself if we are saved. And he is saying to them that they should walk not as fools. Somebody would say, can't believers be foolish? Well, we use scripture to answer that question. As Paul said to the church at Ephesus or wherever you are, at Word of Faith Center or sitting somewhere, if you are a believer, Paul is saying that um, we should be careful how we live. The New King James said, not as fools. The NIV said, not as unwise. So I'm saying, the word is saying that we could be foolish. Yeah, being born again does not exempt you from foolishness. So we can be foolish, but God wants us not to be foolish. Yeah, you are born again. You are redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. You can talk about the greater one is in me. You can talk about being led by the Spirit. You can talk about be, be free, everything. The foolishness of the devil is under your feet. But Paul says that the time that we have, we should use it wisely. The time that we live here, we should live wisely. And as you and I know, we live in uh, difficult times at the moment, difficult in the sense that we have been locked up. <laughs> well, not locked up exactly, but we are in a lockdown and we've been very much restricted from the things that we can and cannot do. There are two things we can do. We can either utilize this time very wisely or we can waste it. And what I want to do this morning is to look at uh, how time can be wasted and how time can be utilized in the light of where we are. And I believe from what Paul is saying to us that the time that we have now, we have to make use. Use it wisely. Yeah? So let's carry on. I want to take you to uh, a book of Exodus. Okay, uh, for the sake of time, we, we don't have to uh, read everything there, but it, it talks about the experience of the Israelites uh, and their wanderings. Uh, in Exodus chapter 15, it tells you how they sing gloriously unto the Lord and, and the excitement that they have over there. Okay, but as you drop down in Exodus 15 verse 24, it tells us that, um, no, let me read from verse 15, so, no, not 15, verse 21, so it gives us a better picture. It said, and Miriam answered, sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously, the horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, then they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. Now when they came to Marah, they could not drink the water of Marah, for they were, they were bitter. Therefore, the name of it was called Marah. And the people complained against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? The story here tells us that, I mean, one minute they were excited because of what God 
has done for them. He has brought them gloriously. He has saved them. Yeah, the Red Sea has opened and they've gone through. And they were really excited. Things were going well for them. But they got to a place where there was no water to drink. And what did they do? That circumstance forced them to start complaining. And you know something, it's something that we can, all of us can do. We can take our eyes off God and begin to complain where we are. You know, today I say many of our movements have been restricted and I can spend my time at home begin to look to when this restriction will be lifted and can complain all oh, the things I did yesterday I cannot do and it can make me take my eyes off God. Yeah. Let's move on. And at home we can end up with I've listed a few things here, unnecessary arguments because all of us are at home, we can instead of having a good time, we can quickly get on each other's nerves because we are all in close proximity. Yeah, you watch the news and they're telling you that we're domestic abuse and uh, domestic violence have increased because people are at home. I don't think it should be so. And that's where we are. Some of us are not into domestic abuse or violence, but we can spend, we can easily spend our time complaining. We can easily spend our time on social media, picking up things that some of us may say don't add value to life. This is not to kick anybody or anything, but how do we make the best use of the time that we have at the moment? Okay, when we don't have to get out of bed early and rise up early, go to bed late and eat the bread of sorrows as the psalmist would put it, but there's plenty of time, okay? We know the virus is there and we are praying that there will be a quick answer to it. I go say, let's use the best time or let's use, make the most of what he is giving us uh, at the moment. Okay. There's a lot of, well, I would say rubbish. Mm -hmm. Some people may not agree with me on social media today. Some of us are sending a lot of video clips and they, they just come in in volumes these days. Um, my concern for maybe myself and for others is that uh, we are not able to distinguish what is fake news, what is absolute rubbish, and we just lap it. My advice to you, don't waste time on it. Some of it will come in the form of Christian material, and many of us swallow the bait, um, and it, it can shake and our foundation. Just want to encourage you, make sure that your foundation is strong. When somebody gives you something that um, <laughs> appears to be good, okay, it might be poison, uh, which has been wrapped up in that uh, bait. Make sure you don't swallow it. It, it, it can uh, kill you. When someone sends you something, Examine it. Paul said in uh, Acts chapter uh, 17, I think I said Paul, but yeah, in the book of Acts, it tells us about the Bereans. It said when they have received the word of God, yeah, if you check with Acts 17 11, it said, uh, one translation said they were fair minded, one said they, uh, they, they, they were noble, that those, that those in Thessalonica, in that they received the word with all readiness and searched the scriptures daily to find out whether these things were so. Okay. So when you pick up something, 
yeah, particularly from uh, I said, as many of us are cooped at home at the moment, pick up things from social media. Make sure that you you're not wasting time on it, and make sure that you've checked it. Yeah. Make sure you've checked it, that what it say or what you're hearing is so. Even as we share the word today, make sure that the tests I've given, that what Fred is saying is so, okay? It's not because you don't trust me, but it's because that's what the word say. When it's been given to you, check it. Yeah. Praise God. Let's go. Yeah, well, so I just said something about yeah, the social media, the disturbing material that uh, is, has come to us through uh, the social media. Also, many of us may have put our lives on hold, we're waiting for when things will get better before uh, we make the next step in our lives. We have constraints at the moment, and my encouragement to you is that don't waste that time and say that I'm just waiting until tomorrow when tomorrow is okay. Make the best of what you've got today. Thank God that you have life. Thank God that you're breathing. Thank God that you have a roof over your head. Don't waste the time. Yeah? Are you still talking to me? Let's go. Let's go. <laughs> yeah, so it's just a bit about the wasted time. Uh, I want to maybe spend more time on how we can use our, our time uh, wisely. Uh, and let me take you to uh, another uh, uh, scripture uh, in the book of uh, Philippians. Yeah, Philippians 1, verses 12 and 13. Yeah, Paul writing to the church at Philippi. He said, But I want you to know, brethren, that the things which happened to me have actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel so that it has become evident to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. Paul talks here about the things which actually hap uh, happened to him. You know what happened to him? Paul has been locked up. Yeah. How many of us will be writing letters encouraging people if we've been locked up? We're looking forward to coming out and be complaining. But Paul, who wrote a fair bit of the New Testament, yeah, God used him to write a fair bit of the New Testament, yeah. A man of God. Preaching the word of God. Yeah? Making sure that lives are saved, making sure that souls are brought into the kingdom. Souls are snatched from the clutches of the enemy. He's been locked up. Yeah? It doesn't matter how you want to advance, the enemy wants to stop the advancement. Okay? We don't know why, why we are where we are today, but what we know is that God cannot be locked up. And if God is in you, if you are a child of God, make sure you are not locked up. Paul said, yeah, the things which has happened to him has actually turned out for the furtherance of the gospel. Yeah, so he wasn't wasting time or he didn't put his time on hold because he's in prison. But so God so good or uh, when you do a bit of reading on it, he said uh, verse thirteen here, he said, It has become evidence to the whole palace guard and to all the rest that my chains are in Christ. Yeah, so a bit of the further reading will uh, when I'm in further reading if you have good Bible commentaries uh, and dictionaries, it will take you a bit more. Now, 
um, Paul was actually locked up in the palace. Okay, you cannot find your way, just making your way to the palace to to share the good news, uh, because he was locked up there, inside, and he has the palace guards obviously as his uh, audience. He had a, a captive audience, um, in that where the gospel would not normally get to. God in a wonderful way <laughs> although the enemy was trying to thwart uh, the advancement of the gospel uh, if the man of God is locked up obviously things will come to a standstill by natural far he had uh, access to the corridors of power uh, to share uh, the good news there what am I trying to say that in the time that one is at home or things are not going the way it should go. We can either come to a standstill because of the circumstances or because of the circumstances we can actually uh, lay hold of what Paul says in his word, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord. Yeah. So we love the Lord. We don't like the circumstances. But hey, let's make the best of it as Paul did. Let's not waste time. Let's not mark time. Let's make the best of what we have, even if the circumstances are not right. It's only God who can keep us there. It's only God who can make a way out for us. It's only God who can turn a difficult situation. He can make everything beautiful in His time for us. Okay. So, you're going to ask myself, how can I do what Paul is doing? You know something, Paul? What Paul has got, we've got it as well. If you're born again, tongue talking believer, yeah, Paul has the Holy Spirit in him. You have the Holy Spirit. Paul loved the law, you love the law. Yeah. So we can say we can do all things through him who strengthens us from within. Okay, let's look at, look at some scriptures again. I want to take you to uh, the book of Mark. Mark chapter 12, verses 30 and 31. And you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like this. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Okay. We told in the scriptures that we read earlier in verse 13 there about Paul. Uh, it said his chains are in Christ. He has a life in him. And we also have a life in him. Yes. If we devote all that we have, all our strength, all our might, if we devote everything to Him, if we remain in Him, not when He suits me, but all the time, when God becomes the focus of our attention, I believe we can make the best out of every difficult circumstance. Yeah? When he talks about loving our neighbor as well, sometimes we can easily be focused on ourselves. Yeah. But we need to focus on God. Yeah. And if he's in us, we can love our neighbor as ourselves. Yeah. If you love your neighbor, you won't steal from them. If you love your neighbor, you won't tell lies about them. If you let Love your neighbor when they do things against you, you can forgive them. Yeah, good. Let's move on. In terms of the practical things which I believe Paul did, which we can do, Paul always enjoyed time of fellowship with the Lord. Yeah, 
Another psalm we've been reading recently, uh, Psalm 91, He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. See, it speaks of just time, just <laughs> living in the Lord. Someone will say, where is your address? <laughs> I live in the Lord, that's my address. <laughs> yeah, so I encourage you. Again, somebody will say this is all familiar, but let's just begin to be practicalized. Some of these things which uh, we know already, you know, spend time uh, with the Lord. And it, it will help us to see things from a different angle. And so it doesn't matter how dire the situation is, when I begin to see from God's perspective, I won't spend time being wasted. Yeah. Wow. Well, I will make good use of the times because he said the days are evil. He doesn't want us to be unwise. He doesn't want us to be foolish. Okay. Perhaps more meditation on the word. Again, come back to it again. We have more time today. I know some of us are essential workers or key workers, so. We're still busy at work, but most of us have got a bit of time <laughs> working from home or being furloughed or we've been sh shielded. Yeah, spend time in prayer. A time of Bible study. No problem. A time of obedience. I say, love your neighbor. Yeah. I'm not talking about your next door neighbor, although it might include your next door neighbor. <laughs> but people who come across our path, sometimes people who are living at home with us. Love your neighbor as yourself. Be selfless, not to be selfish. Yeah, Paul went all out for the church. He didn't focus on his circumstances. Yes. He advanced the gospel even behind bars. And you and I can advance the gospel even in lockdown. Call someone you haven't spoken to for years. Yes, yeah, send them a text. Yeah, encourage you, uh huh? Mm. Just be a good neighbor. Mm. Show kindness. Yeah. Maybe bake a cake for your neighbor. <laughs> Not to buy indulge anyway. Yeah. Let's make sure that the enemy has nothing against us. Yeah. Praise God, that's what Paul Paul did. He didn't he didn't waste time. Yeah, Luke 21, 26 onwards, he said men's heart failing them from fear and the expectation of those which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven will be shaken. Then they will say the Son of Man come in a cloud with glory and great power. He said, when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads because your redemption draws near. Again, I said, uh, because of circumstances, we may be getting a bit nervous, a bit frightening, but again, it's the unfolding of, of scripture, the difficult times are coming and we all know that the signs of the close of age are very much uh, evident around us. Yeah, that the Bible said when these things are beginning to happen, which are happening, it said we should look up. Okay. It talks about a, a greater degree of intimacy. Uh, with the law. And you know something? We can never have enough of the law. Yeah. 
Some of us can sit down and watch television for three, four hours. And half an hour with the Lord and sometimes we're falling asleep. But let's not beat ourselves. The thing is, if it's in our heart that we want to enjoy fellowship, things will get sweeter and sweeter as we make the effort to draw near. The Bible says when we draw near, it will draw near to us. It's always willing. Here to enjoy time of fellowship with us. He asks us in the book of Hebrews to come boldly. We don't have to come because uh, we are afraid or anything. Yes, he's taking fear away. Things that can stop us from coming is yeah, guilt. Yeah, we can't have the enemy, the accuser of the brethren, always saying, Things which sometimes we lap. But if we have confessed our sins, yeah, the Bible tells us that when we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So nothing should really hold us from coming boldly before the throne of grace. That's what He says we should do. He said, yeah, we should come boldly, that we might obtain mercy and find grace to help us in time of need. So the access to the throne room, yes, is 247. It's open to us all the time. It shouldn't be any hindrance from a believer going to spend time there. Yeah, let's go for it, yeah. Praise God. Let's look up. Yeah. Yes, let's lift up our heads. Yes, and as in the midst of circumstances, the circumstances will not bury us. But we're looking up yeah, to the author of, and the finisher of our faith. He says there, because our redemption draws near. Yeah, let's let us look at a, a, another scripture. In the book of Colossians, yeah, chapter 3, uh, verse 2 there says, Set your mind on things above, not on things on the air. Again, here Paul's writing to believers. Okay, sometimes we can look at things around us, but we are born again. We are God's people. We are washed in the blood. There is nothing that can hold us down. And he said, set your mind. Our thought processes should be set on things above. Yeah? And I think he was referring to the things of God. Set a man on the promises of God. Let us embrace, appropriate what the Word of God says. Yeah. In the book of Hebrews, it talks about looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. Yeah. So there's a greater emphasis on looking unto the law. Yeah. You read in the gospel it talks about um, when Peter was looking when uh, he was walking on water and he was uh, he was looking on uh, at Jesus. He was able to walk on the water. He was able to walk walk on the supernatural plane. He was able to defy defy signs. He walked on water because he was looking unto Jesus. That when we began to look at the storm, it began to sink. Yeah, we're not here to beat Peter, but again, we can learn from uh, these things that, uh, yeah, I'm not saying we turn a blind eye to us, uh, our surroundings, but the one who can take us through any circumstance is the Lord. So our focus remains on Him, not wasting time 
not mourning or moping over things, but looking unto him. Colossians 2, 6, 2, 6 say, As you have therefore received Christ, Jesus the Lord, so walk in him. So he says, walk in him. We are not to walk in ourselves. We are not to walk in our own ways. Walk in him. In another place, it talks about our life a hidden in him. Yeah, another one talks about we are complete in him. In the book of Acts, it tells us in him we live, we move, and have our being. Okay? We are connected to him. We are not on our own. A branch that is by itself, it doesn't matter how green it looks, it's just a matter of time, it will begin to show signs of withering. Yeah. So, we have received him. We're going to walk in him. Okay, in conclusion, we need to yes, uh, recap on what we've spoken about so far. Uh, we, we, we started off by talking about uh, most of us. Uh, what we have today is a bit of plenty uh, of time and then we look at the scriptures, uh, Paul writing to the church at Ephesus, uh, the things that he was uh, saying to them. But, uh, they should be careful how they live, not as unwise but as wise and making uh, the most of every opportunity. Uh, because uh, the days are evil. We went on to look at um, how our time can be wasted and we look at how uh, Paul, despite all the uh, handicap that got into his way, was able to utilize that time effectively. And my encouragement to you and, and, and to myself as well, uh, making the best use uh, of our time, yeah, spending quality time with the Lord. And I know I say most of us are home, maybe we have been spending an extended period with our families as well, make sure that you're spending quality time uh, with, the, with the family. I don't want anybody saying that, well, the pastor said, uh, spend quality time with the Lord, so you block yourself upstairs and <laughs> just spending time with the Lord. Please, please bring a uh, balance in there, because God loves family as well, and so make sure that uh, the family is inclusive and that uh, we are enjoying the time together. Yeah, uh, praise the Lord. Yeah, as we conclude, if you're not a believer, I just want to invite you. God loves you and God is looking out for you. You want to get uh, said this Jesus who we do as well. We're crazy about him. Okay, some of us are very excited, also not so excited. Whatever the state of your disposition, Jesus loves you. And I just invite you just to uh, give your life uh, to the Lord. If you do, We'll be praying shortly. Yeah. So in in, in conclusion, uh, I say we want to make the most of the time that we have. If you don't remember anything, just remember make the most of the time that we have. Spending quality time with the family. Also spending quality time with the law. Don't waste your time on ideal chatter, old wives' fables, okay, rumor mongering or picking up things from the internet which don't, or social media which don't add value to life. If you pick up anything, make sure you check it. God loves you. Let's pray. If you want to accept Jesus as your Lord, and Savior, please pray with me. Lord, I, I, I accept Jesus as my 
Lord and Savior. I confess that I am it, a sinner. I believe Jesus died for me and he rose again from the dead for me. I now confess him as my Lord and my Savior. I thank you in Jesus' name. If you have prayed this prayer with me, you are a believer and we welcome you into the family of God. Join us on, a, on our weekly uh, broadcast and look on our website and you'll find some um, material there. At the moment, we are not able to attend churches, so we can't signpost you to any church at the moment. But until such time, I said you can join us uh, weekly. Look on our website to find some material there. And we say, God bless you. And the people of World of Faith Center, it's been nice being with you today. God richly bless you.